So how long should your prompt be? Which words really matter? Well, I ran some tests and the results were fairly interesting. If you didn't know, Midjourney has a new feature where you can hit forward slash shorten, input your prompt and see which words matter the most to the bot. The shorten command will also give you five shortened versions of that prompt. I tried this in a few different ways. First, I went onto the Midjourney website and I found this beautiful picture of Aubrey Hepburn. It was made by Hannah Akir, so thanks for this. And here's the prompt, an abstract painting of an image featuring the face of Audrey Hepburn burn in the style of spray painted realism, realistic watercolor paintings, 32K, ultra HD, red, detailed character illustrations, Indian pulp culture, dignified pose. So I ran that prompt through the shorten command and look what it comes up with. It's kind of shocking to me how similar they are. And can you notice which words were taken away? Words like featuring don't really matter. In the style of not a big deal. 32K, ultra HD, detailed character illustration didn't even seem to matter. So do we need to use those extra words in our prompt? I think on one side you can say no you don't need them at all and the other side is that well they don't hurt clearly so maybe it just becomes a personal preference kind of thing and you'll see here you can get rid of even more words and still get a very similar picture. Cut it down even more and you're getting right to the punch. You can keep going and perhaps these are swaying a little bit away but still Mid Journey is showing you right here that you don't need a really long prompt. Even just absolutely abstract Aubrey Hepburn red gets you pretty close to that original image. Now take a look at these two prompts. Basically I switched some words around in both and inputted them into the shortened command and the key takeaway here is that the order of your prompt matters a lot. Where the word sits in the prompt determines the weight and importance of that word to the mid journey bot. Now I don't quite know how to understand what's going on but take a look at this quick example. Cinematic still of an anthropomorphic shrimp. Anthropomorphic Anthropomorphic gets 0.83 and shrimp is a 1.0. And then down here you can see the importance of the weights. But over in this first prompt, ocean grunge style wide angle shot of an anthropomorphic shrimp, anthropomorphic is now at 0.99 and shrimp is still at 1. The fact that just the placement of the words determines so much in terms of the weight really makes you wonder just how many versions of a prompt you could actually write. And I think this is really helpful. I mean, it kind of just proves what everyone sort of already knew that the order of your prompt did matter and that words near the beginning were worth more than words near the end but it was kind of hard to quantify and here we can see direct numbers granted the differences aren't that big but there are still differences and I think that's the point but let's take a look at how they generate. Here's your cinematic still of the anthropomorphic shrimp captain. I really like these pictures a lot, you know? And then here's the ocean grunge style, wide angle shot of an anthropomorphic shrimp captain. Same general pictures for sure. So what have we learned so far? That the order of your prompts does matter, according to Midjourney's internal weighting system at least. But the results are fairly similar. So again, is it just a personal preference of how you write the prompt? Let's go through at least two more examples and we can really see what happens. And this time we're going to be using a really short and simple prompt, but we're going to be comparing artists. I'll show you what they look like separately. Here is the Underground Nebula Dawn Mites, a very distinct color palette, some dark purples, dark blues, dark oranges, and a nice shade of charcoal black. Here we have the Nebula by Aaron Douglas a little more colorful, a little more illustrative. And then we have the Nebula by Dan Hillier. Very distinct, black and white images, stark contrast. So take a look at this generation when we combine them. Underground Nebula, Dawn Mites, Aaron Douglas, Dan Hillier. I think Dawn Mites clearly comes through the most. He is the first that's listed. But take a look at how the shortened command sees this prompt. Nebula is by far the most important at 1.0. Underground, even though it's first, gets a 0.6. Dawn Mites is the strongest of the bunch, Aaron Douglas 0.38, but Dan Hillier gets a 0, 0. I mean, maybe you could argue that there's no Dan Hillier influence on these images, but for it to be a 0, that's kind of strange. So what happens when we mix up the prompt? Well, here are the results. Dan Hillier is now at the front, and are the images that different? Maybe the color scheme of Aaron Douglas shows up a little more, and Donald Mites maybe has moved to the back, although in number 4, it'd be tough to argue. And my point is, is that it's not abundant 
abundantly clear that Dan Hillier is now the most important thing. But when you run it through the shorten command, look, Dan Hillier is the most important. At 0.56, Don Mites is at 0.16, and now Aaron Douglas is down near zero at 0.03. But were the generations that different from each other? You don't think so. Although Mid Journey would have you believe that it weighted the words very different. So now what takeaways can we learn from that? I think one, the point is to try different ways of writing the prompt, but two, maybe it doesn't really matter. As in, Mid Journey is a slot machine and you really never know what you're going to get anyways. And therefore, does it really matter what Mid Journey thinks it's doing? If the difference in the results is negligible, am I missing something? Please let me know in the comments below. But I have one more example to show you. All right, here, you're gonna see the same prompt written in three different ways. I mean, the words are totally mixed around. First, on the left side here, Victorian era robot tea party, antique automation sipping oil from porcelain cups, intricate brass gears glistening, depicted with the detail of hyperrealism against a backdrop of post-impressionist pastels. Depicted with hyper-realistic detail, glistening intricate brass gears of antique automatons at a Victorian era robot tea party, sipping oil from porcelain cups against a backdrop of post-impressionist pastels. And then over on the right, intricate brass gears of antique automatons glisten, sipping oil from porcelain cups at a Victorian era robot tea party, depicted in hyper-realism with a post-impressionist pastel backdrop. Very similar, but still different. And now look at the generations. Even though the same words are applied, I'd say number one and two, yeah, you're getting similar looking pictures. And then the third way of writing it, number two is basically what we want, but the other three are quite different. And the purpose of this example was to shorten each of these prompts and see where they start to differ from each other. So if you use the shorten command on each of these and then generated the next shorten prompt, you're going to get these. Victorian robot tea party. Here is hyper-realistic brass Gears, Victorian era robot tea party, intricate brass gears of antique porcelain cups, robot tea, hyperrealism, impressionist pastel. The first and second are still kind of what we were looking for, the tea party, but the third now has completely gone away from that. Intricate brass gears of antique porcelain cups is clearly what's most important. So even though the prompts contain the same words, the order of the prompt when shortened really, really matters, really matters. So if you're looking to save time by shortening your prompts, you have to be careful. It's not going to go as smoothly as you might think. Shortening one step farther, when Robot Tea Party is first, we get that as the generation. But what's really interesting is that hyper-realistic Brass Gears Victorian Robot Tea Party still comes through pretty well. And on the other side, we're just into some really cool looking cup. Robot Tea Party, Gears, Hyper-Realism, Impressionist Pastels, still done a pretty good job. And then Brass Gears Robot Tea Party Sipping Impressionist. So isn't it interesting that when you shorten a prompt that's in the correct order, you still basically get derivatives of what you're looking for. But if you shorten a prompt that isn't ordered correctly, you're now going to move far away from what you want. All the way down to the bottom, Robot Tea Party Impressionist Pastels, that's a pretty short, accurate prompt. Robot Tea Party Sipping Impressionist, very succinct. Intricate Brass Gears Robot Pastel, very, very different. I know that's a lot of information to take in, and to be honest, I'm not really sure what the conclusions are other than the order of your prompt definitely matters. So I would experiment with that. And also shortening your prompt isn't that big of a deal, although it could help you become more efficient if that's what you're looking for. Quick reminder, there's some free PDFs in the description. You can check out my prompt pack available on my website. Let me know if I've missed anything. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.